Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? After all the social activities yesterday. All good? Cool. Welcome to our session, um, Designing the Future of the Drupal Admin UI. Um, so, my name is Sascha Eckenberger. I'm a designer at Unic, a Swiss-based company in Zurich. I'm Sascha Ecke on all social media, uh, so yeah, just follow me everywhere. If you have a hard time to pronounce my last name, it's quite easy, it's Eck and Burger. So, yes. <laughs> Hi everybody, hi to the new ones here. I'm Cristina Tomilias, I'm a front-end developer at Lulabot. Uh, you can find on Drupal, me on Drupal.org as Sequino. Uh, your turn. Hi, I'm Archita. I've been working in Drupal for four years. Uh, I am a UX designer, I work with QED42. Um, so, we are going to talk a little bit about the initiative in general. Also, we are going to talk about Claros, that probably is something, it's the reason why a lot of you are here today. We are going to talk about the design system, sorry, we are designers, so that's mandatory. We are going to show you something, some new things that we are working on. Um, you can take photos, but just be sure that it's work in progress, you will see later. Also, we are going to ask to you if you want to come and join us and help us and some data later. So let's start with the initiative. Um, the first thing is why, why did we start? I'm pretty sure all of you are aware of the why. So the Drupal administration actually wasn't refreshed for years. It's not that it was a bad design, it's just that it goes like eight years old or something like that. Even Drupal 7, Drupal 7 was using 7 and Drupal 8 was using 7. So yeah, it was the time to, to make a change there. So that's why this initiative started. Uh, it was initially the JavaScript modernization initiative and later the admin UI. And we came together and created the whole initiative. So more or less about the initiative, it has three main parts. One is the, the JavaScript modernization, the other is the design one, and also there's the user research that was mostly happening at the beginning, like with Suzanne that is there and a, a lot of other people. And the three parts, uh, it was a little bit complicated because each of us uh, were working on completely different things and we had to come together and try to find goals that were kind of less similar, but each of us uh, made stuff that get into core and we were trying trying to make things better, like for example, the new, de the, the new design system, the new editorial role, so those are all of them things that are work in progress. So in the short term, uh, we're planning on um, updating the, the, the existing admin UI. Um, so it means that we are replacing 7 with a new Claro theme, but it's going to be the same admin UI so far. In the longer term, we are, the goal is uh, to completely change the, the UI. It's going to go to be step by step probably. And when I say completely change the UI, it's not that it's going to be like, I don't know, something to make pancakes or something like that. It's going to be a UI for uh, managing uh, content. It's just that we are trying to think big and uh, trying to change the layout on these things. But you know, you can't completely change someone's uh, interface from one day to another. So it's going to be on a longer term. Good. So Claro, who has heard of Claro so far? Who has used Claro? Who is still using it? <laughs> Good. So, um, I'm happy to announce that we have over a thousand sites already using Claro. So that's quite a lot. 
Um, so, for the few people who have never seen it, um, it looks like this. Um, so basically, everything you know from Seven is in the same place as it was before. Um, we just refreshed it with the design system, as Christina said before. Um, we have all the same regions, but we we had to take a lot of um, consideration in the design. So basically, adding layers to um, give more depth for, for different elements, or also making some elements bigger, more room, more white space. I know a lot of people don't like that, maybe, but we might have something in hand later for that. Um, then we have yeah, you, you see, I just go through some designs, um, so you can see everything is still there, where, where it used to be. It was just basically um, us trying to adapt the design system as quickly as possible to the administration UI. Um, one important thing was um, that we make the, the, the mobile experience better. Um, so, what do I mean by that? So, basically, um, just like making the uh, sure that all the elements are um, like have enough room to click so you don't accidentally click something you don't want to um, also like increasing the text size so it's easier to read on mobile for example um, but I think the most important thing for Claro was accessibility so we did a lot uh, for accessibility and not only in the front end, so we started quite early in the process. So when we started to design or redesign component by component, we already took in um, accessibility maintainers and other people to, that we already have like the first iteration for the design from an accessibility point of view, that we have like an improvement to what we had before. Um, one of the things which took us a while to figure out how we want to do it um, was basically like um, the focus for elements. So by implementing it the way we, we currently have it, like with this green outline, uh, which is basically just like a color which is only used for focusing an element. Um, so this gave us um, quite a good feedback uh, from all the accessibility maintainers and also in our tests. Um, then we also increased the contrast. So to be compliant uh, with like standards like WCHE 2.0 or 2.1, um, we increased all the contrast for all the different elements, um, like the text and also like contrast for input elements and, and so on. And there was also quite a huge involvement to um, improve the experience when you're basically like in Windows high contrast mode, for example. Um, so there was like a, a short demo on Dries Note, if you have seen that. Um, so here you can see uh, like a bunch of components uh, where we like explored how uh, the focus ring, that's basically what we call it, could potentially wor work like and like most of those elements are already implemented in that way. Okay, so how we did get here? So we started like a long time ago and we have our first version of Claro around February and then we launched the first uh, alpha release uh, when we had a few components like buttons, fields and several things and I gotta say they were the first version because we've been iterating on that for several um, months. We launched the five, uh, the, the fifth uh, alpha, like in September, and after that, uh, the goal was going on uh, as experimental theme in Drupal core. It means that we needed to have a better release um, done before the code freeze for the 8.8 .8 version of Drupal, and we had to reach um, specific goals before that, in with enough time 
uh, to have this better release and then getting the, the core committers and project, uh, the product managers and also uh, the framework uh, release managers and everybody reviewing it with enough time to say, yes, we approve it and we will make to Drupal core. But it was really hard the last few weeks because all that feedback came at the same time and we were late. So it's been, uh, I'd say, a rough with last two weeks before that. And now that we are experimental theme in Drupal core, um, you, you, if you are using uh, Drupal 8.8, .8, you still can use the, the country module theme. Um, if you are using 8.8, .8, it's in Drupal core. As experimental, you have to enable it. And our big goal here for Claro is getting as a default admin theme at some point for Drupal 9. But first, we need to reach the stable release before and ideally with more time this time. Um, for that, we have a roadmap. Um, this roadmap ha had several beta blockers that we uh, reached at the end. So and after that, we have several um, boxes with several uh, kind of features that we need to do, uh, have done. Um, before we reach stable. So we have new features, we have a lot of accessibility issues that we need to fix, so a few UX improvements, uh, design improvements also, some technical debt that we had to uh, move from previous issues and uh, try to break the issues and make them smaller uh, to get that done. Right now we have like nine bugs but it doesn't mean that it stays like that. If you please can try Claro, and if you find something, please report that into Drupal Core because the sooner that we get the bugs, the sooner we can start working on them, add them here and get it done before the stable one. And a part of that, uh, we have several um, features that are should have or could have like for example, changing the, the font size and these kind of things that would be really cool, but uh, there are a lot of other things that are more important right now. So that's more or less the roadmap that we have ahead of us, and that's what we need to do before uh, getting into an unstable release, and we need your help for that. So please test Claro and report the bugs. We wanted to have a comprehensive Drupal design system, basically a single um, source of truth where all the elements are grouped and um, uh, collected for anyone in the future to come back and help us and work with us on it. Some characteristics, some traits of uh, the design system we've built, very fresh very accessible, like Sasha rightly said, that accessibility was our primary um, concern. It is absolutely user-friendly and is robust. It has a strong foundation and it has the potential to evolve over time. Foundation has color, typography and um, space in our design system. We have, we Modular scale has several implications. We chose this as it um, we plan to move towards variable fonts and fluid typography in the future. So setting one base value, which is 16 pixels, helps us calculate all other by multiplying it by 1.125. We are using system fonts for this. All the colors, the bright, bold colors you see here, they all achieve AAA accessibility. Modular scale for this as well. This is very well documented in the specifications of Figma. We are working on Figma. In the future, we plan to make a style guide, but for now, everything is on Figma. The design, design system has a, a, a collection of components, and it, um, it has all the use cases of components where uh, we have um, everything from radio buttons to uh, drop downs and everything else. 
based on seven ref seven refresh, we came up with components that were already there and uh, would work as a fallback. Right now, we are focusing on coming up and building and designing components that um, are needed for Claro and also for the next generation UI. For example, this one, uh, one is a drop down that uh, we used for refresh and the other which also has chips, we plan to do that in the future in the new admin UI. Exactly. So, story of a button, yeah, Christina, <laughs> do you want to jump in and talk on the story of the button? <laughs> <laughs> you got me here, okay. Um, you might say, button is button, I mean, what does it have? It just has some text and something, <coughs> maybe a background, maybe a border in there, well, it actually can be wrong, it can be square, it can have several colors, it can have icons, it can not have borders, it should be accessible. So we've probably tried five, 50, 70 versions. So we've had for sure at least 20 final versions, like the one this, this is final. Okay, final two. Okay, no, final, final two, three, one, no. so, yeah. So, and actually we had some of them committed and then we had to, re well, do some changes on there. So we've had several um, iterations on there, and that's the button. How about it? Well, that's the thing. That's not the only button. <laughs> So you see here we have the default button, we have the primary button, then we have this super cool secondary button, but where can we use it? So we have a lot of um, things to take into account here. We are going to change some things in the future, not I'm sure, 10 more buttons, I'm not sure. But that's not all. We also have messages in Drupal Core and it's like, a message is a message, what, what's wrong with that? Well, um, you can have a lot of variations on that. Um, you can have really long messages and really short messages and you can have the three messages together. You maybe can have a new message which is the status one. You maybe want to have uh, something small on the left. You maybe want inline messages. You maybe have, I don't know, there are a lot of options. But the most important thing is that you want, that the, me you want the message be seen by the person that is using your interface. So the final messages that we got in are a little bit different. So this, those are the messages that we have right now. The first time that we saw that, it was like, oh, black messages, are you sure? We have a super wide and clean space. That's actually, how, how many of you know what Claro means? Are you here? You know what's Claro? Of okay. Course. Of course. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, say it. Light, well, light, or that has more space. Claro is a Spanish word for light, or lighter, or something like that. So, yeah, that's the thing, and the messages are super dark. So, yeah, it was quite a shock at the beginning, but it really worked. And a lot of people actually gave good feedback of that. We might still need to change some things, like uh, maybe icons and several things, but as we said, it, it's, we are planning on iterating, on iterating on all the designs and everything, so if you have something to say about that, please just come to, to us, say what's the problem that you're finding, and we will make this better. You want to jump in? Or I can continue. Okay. So we have also several new components on Claro, things that weren't there before that. Uh, for example, uh, another button. Um, so as you can see, the most important thing here is the red one on the bottom, that is the delayed one. What's the history behind it? So the thing is that it's not a button. It doesn't have the markup of a button. So it can't look like a button on an accessibility point of view in several other ways because it is not a button right now. Maybe on a future JavaScript UI, it could be something that actually have an action on the same page. But right now, 
this is a delete action that takes you to another page. So that's a link, that's not a button. But that's a button, it's with a button. So we had to come up with several components, like for example, the pager and these kind of things. We also introduced a new component that it's cart. I think it's the most used component on most of the design systems that you can see, but we didn't have it, so we uh, actually created it and it's used on the appearance page, so you can check it there. Um, the action, uh, the icon uh, link, it's a new kind of button. We are basing uh, part of the design on something that was already there, which is the quick, quick edit, but we're probably going to use it somewhere else. No spoilers yet, so you will see. Some new components that we are planning to put in are the, the chips. You can take the photo now if you want. <laughs> <laughs> So probably the range input and several other things. So the, the idea here is that we are going to introduce new uh, features and new components by the time. So it's not all at the same time. Um, there, do you want to come up with this one? Okay. So the specifications for that are um, everywhere. You can check it uh, uh, on Figma and everywhere. <coughs> one was not. Okay, so um, um, everybody can check it uh, on Figma. You just have to go and check the link. We are using a really uh, new, like from the last year's collaborative tool for design. Uh, we are planning to use um, and a style guide or line art style guide at some point. We really need to have this conversation, but for so far, all the specs are on Figma or on the issues that we create on Claro. So what's Figma? Um, Figma is like Google Docs for designers. That's the easier way of explaining it. For us, it was like a completely new change and that's something that let us um, work together from people from all over the world, different time zones, and it was super easy. So if you want to see what's a designer's party, it more or less looked like that. <laughs> so you can actually steal someone's idea and make it like it's yours and make it better, so design party. You can check the designs uh, here, that's a URL, uh, it's public to anybody, you can actually see it. If you are logged in Figma, you can actually um, check the color, check the font sizes and check everything. And if you are a designer, just come to us and ask for permissions, we'll let you play with everything and please help us because we really need designers, so come and join the party. So, we now saw a lot of things you might already saw in Wild, right? Um, so like everything which is um, basically like implemented or in one way or the other into Claro. Um, but now I want to show you basically just like an outlook of what's beyond that. So what we are also working on. So. While working on Claro and also the design system in particular, we came across a lot of small things we wanted to change but we weren't able to because we had to restrict ourselves um, because we didn't want to change too much for Claro. Um, that was for one fact that a lot of more people need to be like bring in uh, to do these changes and on the other hand it takes a lot of more effort and time to roll out these changes. Um, so the proposed layout changes here um, is basically this is just like a stripped down wi wireframe of how Clara looks today, like the, the node edit form. And now we have like several things like this sidebar on the right with the settings, which is actually not a sidebar, it's part of the content. And also we have a toolbar on the top, uh, which can also be limiting. So we were thinking, 
why not rearranging things and make them in one way or the other better? Um, so basically like having different new regions and different new elements to work on. Um, so the sidebar for sure can be basically like collapsed and expanded um, as you also see on other CMSs. I mean, it's not a pattern that we invented. It's out there for quite a while. Um, so this would be like the, the new toolbar concept that we could potentially, as I said, like this is all highly um, work in progress and maybe we work on it. Maybe we will just, you know, screw it and do something else. Uh, it's just like something we were thinking of. Um, so potentially it could be that the cyber is on the left and for RTL user it, it would be then on the right um, and so on. Um, there is this new cyber region, uh, which is this here, which can contain all the settings. So this is not maybe limited to the node edit form. So this could also be potentially be used in other places in the admin UI, just to concentrate settings in basically uh, one column or one place. Um, but I think the most striking one would be the sticky action bar. Um, so basically like having a fixed header or a fixed element, which gives you always like a clear call to action. So if we take this know that it form as an example, you would always have the save button on hand. So you don't have to scroll like, I don't know, like a lot to get to the save button if you just wanted to change the first element uh, on the node form, for example. So just like providing uh, more feasible options. Um, so I did some design mockups in the past couple of weeks uh, and also these two guys gave some feedback and so we, we did some small iteration, but uh, this is really a work in progress. You can take pictures, but you know, just it won't be there in any time soon, just saying that. Um, so this could be basically like an, an overview page um, with like a table of content. So like having uh, content in there so it's familiar, but it looks a bit different. It has a call to action on the top to create new content. Uh, everything is a bit more compact, but still um, in a nice way shown. Um, like the node edit form with more depth, with more clear separation of different elements, like the sidebar and the content, uh, the sticky bar at the top, and then maybe a potential implementation of the new toolbar. Now you're saying blue isn't your color. <coughs> There's too much spacing or too less spacing or whatever. Um, we get that points. Um, so something we're also uh, taking into consideration, but we, which was basically just like out of reach for Claro. Um, which could also potentially be there in the future, like personalization options. So if you don't like blue, you might change just the accent color to something else like red or green or you name it, just something else. For example, like these could be colors you might use or might want to use, maybe not, maybe others. Um, then it could potentially look like this or Maybe like this, if you like orange or red, maybe pink. Yeah, you get it. Like having more per personalization options. <laughs> also like spacing settings. So one of the feedback for Claro was that we were using too much white space. So seven was more compact. That's actually true, but there is also a reason behind it. There's already like um, an issue on Drupal.org um, where like there were like uh, um, things proposed how we can solve that. So this could also be potentially like a setting in the future in the UI, so you can reduce it. Um, the same goes for um, motion. So if the new UI has more like interactive, like interactiveness, um, then we could also provide a reduced motion setting um, like from an accessibility point of view, or you just dislike everything like being nicely animated and transitions. Um, 
also even going even further and making like high contrast as a setting so that you don't have to force your system into high contrast mode but you can force the UI into high contrast mode. Improved RTL support. Um, so I did this mock-up, so uh, I use Google Translate. Don't blame me if there is anything wrong on this one here. Um, but as you can see, so this could also be potentially like a setting. So you can set the whole admin UI to RTL, and then you have everything in the flow you used to. Right, so like the sidebar moves to the right, and so on. So there are many, many, many options possible, and I think we discussed um, all the three of us, and also with uh, other bunch of people, we discussed a lot of possibilities we wanted to do, but we restrict ourselves for now. Um, but there's one more thing. I mean, it wouldn't be 2019 without showing this. Right, so why not having a dark mode, right? Why not just having a dark mode? Well, the implementation is not that easy as I just say, why not having it? It takes a lot of effort to do it. But this could also be potentially like a change in the future. So if your whole operating system is in dark mode, why not having automatically the UI in dark mode or making it a setting that you can turn it on or off? And also here we could have accent colors, so which match your system or your preferences. So this is all exciting, at least for me as a designer, doing a dark mode is always exciting uh, because it's a trend. And I really like dark interfaces, but we have to keep in mind that this was all highly experimental and we just like started figuring out what we want to do in the next couple of months and years. So it's a long way to go, but we were just like quite passionate about, you know, just showing you that we have something else in mind that just like the Claro is basically the end. So it's just a start. Okay, here's where you come in. So we really like to have people testing Claro, helping Claro, uh, getting involved. It's not, so you can help in a lot of ways. If you're a designer or you know a designer that knows a little bit of Drupal, it will be great even if they don't know Drupal. Please come and help. Um, if you want to help uh, on issues, um, uh, recently, because it's an experimental core right now in Drupal, uh, in core, um, you just have to go to the issue queue to the, from Drupal core, check uh, Claro theme as a component. That's a URL if it's easier for you. And find four issues that are active and need work or just review them. Or, I don't know, fill <coughs> new issues because you found a bug or something. So. Designers, please come and join the design party. And those are the Slack channels where you can actually join to Drupal Slack. Um, we have the separate party for designers and then all the rest of the people are welcome into the other one, unless you want to come and dress pink or black or something else. Um, actually, the admin UI, a lot of things are discussed also about design and how to implement things, so everybody's welcome anywhere. Um, you can uh, join uh, uh, the admin UI, ask for permissions for Figma, the, ad the admin UI design and ask for permissions for Figma, the admin UI channel and just jump in and ask for help or whatever. So we meet every Wednesday at to two and a half in Europe, uh, in Central Europe. Um, the chats are usually, the, the, the meetings are usually chat only, so if you are working and doing something else, you can just follow it, say, hi, I'm here, just larking or something like that, and just read what's going on. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, they are just chat only, uh, so anybody can just jump in. Uh, they're in English, but since it's uh, written, so anybody that it's not fluent in English can also help. And please come to the um, uh, sprints tomorrow. 
or today they will be on the tables also on the sprints um, say how you want to contribute we will need people also writing documentation and I don't know whatever you feel you want to help just come in there and we'll figure out good so um, let's summarize what we saw um, we have a thousand sites or more using Claro. Um, you can insert, insert it as a, as a contract module or uh, it will be as, uh, available as an experimental theme in Drupal core. So just use it and give feedback, find bugs and other things. Uh, everything is welcome. Just make sure you test it. Um, accessibility is important and will be important for everything we do in the future. Um, so this is really like the foundation of the work we've done for the design system, for Claro, and also for everything we do in the future. And there is new stuff in the Merck, so Claro is not the end. So uh, there's a lot of things to come and a lot of things to fix and a lot of things to figure out how we potentially can do it and implement it. And yeah, just be excited about it and help us together to build it. Um, yes, so one important thing to say, um, all the gifts were treated safely and nicely, so no gift were harmed during this presentation, just as a little side note. So uh, thank you very much. Um, we're now here for questions, if anybody has questions. Thank you. Problem. So this might be <clears throat> sorry. This might be uh, maybe getting in the weeds a little bit. But for example, on the uh, with the error messaging, uh, all of us have encountered uh, errors that go down the page, down the page. You know, this this long. Has there been any thought to you know restricting them and maybe having it expand with the click so that you, you don't get lost in the error? So, <laughs> messages history. Okay. So, um, well, even going f uh, further in time, so before that, we uh, did a lot of research. And one of the goals, we, we didn't go that far on the explanation of the three parts of the initiative, but on the UX part, we defined actually. Um, so several things come from there, like for example, we ideally in the future will have how to save and this kind of thing. So a lot of things can happen there. And one of them was our goal was to solve mainly um, content author, uh, editors problems. Sure. Right. So, very few times an editor is going to see this huge message. So that's the main goal. So when we actually decided what was the best um, design for messages, we're taking into account the length of the messages. So you as an editor, not as a site builder, you're not going to see that huge messages. We had several proposals where actually the messages could be toggled. What's the problem there? It's the structure of the data of the messages. How, what, at what point do you actually crop, cut the message? Three lines, four lines, at a certain point, do you let the system define what's the title? Because that's one thing that we actually discussed on a, on a UX meeting. Let's give the messages a title. But it's like a lot of messages don't come even from the database or something like that. So you won't never have a message or something. So it was super difficult to actually define that. And where do you cut the messages? Uh, you define that for desktops, then for mobiles, then for... So we ended up just saying, okay, um, these messages right now are not going to have a limit because, of course, we need that long messages on, on for site builders, but for content editors, right now that's enough. It doesn't mean that it can't be improved, that's actually one of the points to improve over the time, so... Hi there. 
Hi. Um, just, just a short point on that. I think actually dealing with the length of the messages is also a task for actually working on the text. Because we have lots of text, UI text that is way too long. So the question would rather be to make the text so short that it works. Um, but the other question I had, because I really like the fact that you want to look into the toolbar as well, would that also be the moment to actually rearrange the toolbar? Because we have some Drupal 7 legacy still in there, like the content page where media items need to live on the content page and other content lives under structure. So would that be the right moment to say, okay, let's change that as well? So um, this is also a really long conversation and we already had this conversation. <laughs> So the thing here is that don't touch my Drupal is usually a point that a lot of thing, a lot of people is going to say to you if I, I'm used to something, uh, don't touch my Drupal, don't change me the things from where I'm used to get them. So yes, um, some of the conclusions that came from the, the, the study that we made on the UX, UX side of the, of the initiative is that um, you end up with a completely different uh, toolbar when you are a content editor. And a lot of things are inside the, the, the content tab, but then you have some things inside the structure and some, time, some things inside, inside the configuration. So yes, ideally we should change the information ar architecture of the toolbar, but where do we place that limit? Are we uh, actually focusing ourselves on site builders? which is people that is going to work for one, three months, two years on a site. After that, site, uh, content authors are the ones that are going to live with that Drupal site. So we really, so one of the proposals was actually having separate menus and have a different <coughs> role, a new role for site, for content authors, content editors, I think we ended up with a name. So yeah. Uh, the thing is that one of the proposals that we were talking is maybe we just move some stuff inside uh, the content tab and then configure differently the other tabs. So maybe rethink what, the what goes inside the structure, what goes inside configuration and so on. So yes, that ideally should happen, I don't know when, because you don't want to break people's rules. So. Probably in a country module first, and then I don't know. It's it's on the ideas issue queue. If you want, if you want to jump in, please go into ideas issue queue. Is um, Drupal? Well, it's project Drupal Dash Dash ideas. So just find, look for um, uh, what's the name of the issue? Don't remember. Well, it's. <laughs> We'll try to find that there. So it's uh, it's in there already. So you jump in and, and propose anything and get involved if you want to help there. Hi. Hi. Great talk. Uh, will uh, will it be uh, compatible with Internet Explorer 11? <laughs> will still. Be I know. I know it's bad, but You're it will still be supported for like six years. It's terrible. But and uh, like uh, related to that. Uh, what are the techniques used? Are there, is it already in CSS grid and CSS uh, variables or whatever you want to call them? Do you want to? <laughs> like you mean, like the new stuff you saw? Yeah, the the new Claro theme. Is it, uh, is it built with uh, grid, uh, for instance? Or it's like not built yet, so. Oh, it's still. To uh, be defined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yes, it's so uh, Claro is in Drupal core, so it will comply with all the core um, standards. So, yes, it will be available. Well, it will comply with uh, IE 11. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe Lori can say something. No, about grids. Uh, what well, you want to jump in? It's not that we are using grids. It's just that. So about. About, uh, is this about the browser support policy. So we have a new browser support policy in 8.8, .8, which drops some uh, very old browser versions from, nice. like, like such as Firefox 25, <laughs> <laughs> which is probably from 2013, uh, which you can install on your mo most recent Mac. And uh, so we do support the browsers, in fact. And we do have now a browser support policy that we comply with. 
And uh, about the grid, we are not using CSS grid, and uh, we are using Flexbox instead. And we are using the CSS custom properties, but and we use Post CSS for providing a backwards compatibility layer to i11 or a polyfill. It's yeah, that's what we do. And uh, in future, when we drop support for i11, we can get rid of that Post CSS plugin and use the CSS custom properties the way they are supposed to be used. <laughs> So, so I know you're using Figma now for all the design and I see all the activity in Figma and there's a lot of comments and then you're also talking about having a, like a style guide that's separate um, and I heard that like yesterday Tim Plunkett was mentioning in his talk about maybe having a different way of integrate better integrating the design process into Drupal.org. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about what would be a what, what what's needed there? Are so, are you mentioning uh, Drupal dot org pro uh, workflow, or in general? Just in, just in general, like what's what's missing from the current design process to uh, make the work of the design maybe more visible or more integrated with the rest of the So, the design system ideally will be completely separated <laughs> from Claro. I mean, it's not that it it, it is just for Claro in theory for the new Java. JavaScript or let's figure out what's going to happen there, but then anything that is going to touch uh, the admin UI in theory is going to follow this uh, design system. The thing is that it will ideally be online and accessible. We haven't had this conversation yet, so there's an issue uh, on it goes on Claro, so now it's going to be on Drupal on, on the core issues about using Storybook. That was the first idea. We really don't know what's going to be the end of that, the, the final solution. So we haven't figured it out how to integrate with Drupal.org. And conversation is going on. Any more questions? Uh, so, uh, focus on accessibility is obviously very important, uh, color contrast you mentioned specifically, but then you also mentioned in the future you're going to give people a tool to change the colors and they may unwittingly break <laughs> all that hard work. And it might not even be done by a conscientious engineer or designer, they may have like some CEO stood over them saying, make it fit the brand guidelines. And are you going to give them any tools to push back against that? Like. Like, like with password strength, where you say this isn't secure enough, you could have one saying, if you do that, you're going to screw people. I see you're a little bit. Um, are you following the color issue on ideas? I, I will be in Okay, th minutes. there's an issue. <laughs> so there's an issue right now on the ideas issue queue about deprecating the color, color module. Um, it's not that we don't want people to change the colors, it's that probably colors is not the way, the way that col the color module is letting you change anything is not the best way to actually have variations in color for a palette. Like let's, for example, let people change the color for the button and you have a brand uh, policy that says, those are my four colors that I want to, to use. Right now the color module don't let you just choose between four of them. It just gives you the whole <coughs> spectrum for colors, so you can have the anything there. So, yes, ideal, ideally there should be this tool. I'm not sure if based on color or an evolution of that, because it's not only us, also the new front-end theme, Olivero, is going to use something like that, so um, it's going to happen. How? We still don't know. How extensive has your user research been? Uh, your user testing and so on. Okay, so um, there we had several um, steps there. Uh, um, you want to answer? Or? 
Yeah, you want? Okay. So, um, yeah, it's, there are several people here that were involved. Um, so we did the first survey. Uh, I think two, three hundred people answered the survey. So what were the main point, pain points on the current UI? After that, we did the card sorting. Uh, yes, the card sorting, uh, where we actually were trying to figure out what should be the information architecture that we were mentioning before. Um, it, tur it turned out that people were actually answering uh, with the same structure that they know right now from Drupal, so it, really, it wasn't really useful. And after that, we made several tests on the current UI to see um, what was the, s the best layout, because we had several proposals uh, in the past that were close to Gutenberg, and right now it's not exactly the best way of changing the current UI so far. So um, that's more or less what we did. So mainly from the survey, that's most of the um, information that we have. Good. Thank you again. And we're around. Just ping us if you have any more questions. Thank you.